Hello, and welcome to episode 116 of Pros. This week, spend every waking moment obsessing over time, money, and work. Your ears aren't fooling you, dear listeners. We do have only one short story this week, but it serves the length of the usual two shorter stories, so it should do us well. I do encourage you all to go follow the show on social media under at Pros Podcast across all platforms. If you are enjoying the show, please click that five-star review button for Pros wherever you're listening, and do consider writing a review. It really does help out a ton. For easiest access to the show, subscribe using whatever podcast app you're using right now. And do go check out the Pros Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash pros podcast and consider supporting the show there. Both heaps of gratitude and a little swag will come with that deal. Lastly, I want to make sure everyone refreshes their feed as we get a little closer to All Hallows' Eve. As per tradition, pros will be putting out a little special for that beloved and most spooky of holidays. Thanks for listening. Let's get to the tale, shall we? This week, we have Pay to Play. Enjoy. Pay to Play. An original short story by Jared I. McGee. Shin woke up at 5.59. Fantastic, he thought with sincerity. He'd beaten his workplace alarm for the fifth day in a row. One minute was one minute. It counted as early. That meant he would bank roughly seven extra credits thus far this week alone. He could buy the better air canister refills or get that toothache looked at if he kept the streak up, albeit for quite a while longer. Or he could do what he usually did, continue to stockpile those extra credits for a rainy day somewhere down the road, even if that rainy day might be when he began to see his productivity rating and therefore his credits stream, take a severe dip. Hopefully, his diminution would be a couple of decades off before it started, but you could never be too careful. That's what his grandpa had always said. Three minutes of required stretching in front of the simulcaster. Shin got the green light with every stretch. No extra credits for accuracy during the mandated stretch period, but he felt proud that he got each pose and angle right the first time through. That green hue pulsing from the simulcaster screen was a type of reward, he guessed, even if it wasn't something to be traded on in the real world. Pride and health had to count for something, right? (laughs) Huh, he snorted at the thought. As if pride and health meant squat in a world running on credits. Shin shuffled quickly into his bathroom. He okayed a two-minute shower and one ounce of washing liquid by touching the bathroom panel with his thumb. He did not pay extra for hot water. That was not necessary, after all. His housing allotment was small, and he didn't pay for coolant features, even now in the back-end heat of summer. So, the room temperature water would be nice after a night sleeping in the heavy air. And, this way his allotment wouldn't get even warmer, allowing him to suit up in less sweat. A quick toweling later, He hung his towel up on a small hook in the bathroom. He never paid the half credit to have a quick dry applied to his towel. Why spend when the air can do the same thing? 
And who ever died from a slightly damp towel anyway? Shin looked at the simulcaster again. 608? Shit! Where did those four minutes go? He had been holding the contents of his bladder just so he could pay for his toilet flush while he spit his toothpaste into the toilet bowl too, saving on the second spurt from the sink. Somehow he was losing the time he had earned back in waking up before his workplace alarm. Shit, shit, shit. Okay. Time to kick it into high gear. He hurried over to his bedside table and put on his wrist monitor. The integrated systems in his house dinged and thanked him for being a good citizen. And he began his whirlwind of getting the rest of the way ready. He quickly did his usual morning routine. Deodorant. Only one click, using half under each arm. That spins half the credits. Cologne? No way. No cologne today. Janet isn't going to be at the office today, and Shin didn't have the credits to be able to get clearance for a date this month anyway, so why bother? Hair gel? Face lotion? Yeah, no. Not this month. He would get some dings to his appearance file from central personnel, but those small dings to his personnel stock wouldn't carry over after the fiscal year, so he could take that. He couldn't take the three credits for putting all that mess on his face and in his hair. Toothpaste. One pea-sized blob, one credit. Sink and toilet water usage. 30 credits. Man. Water kept going up. The shower had cost him 120 credits. Not for the first time, Shin pondered breaking the law against rain collection. Maybe he could find a system. No, no. That was so stupid. Three enemies of the people had been executed last week alone for water collection. Everyone had a way to skirt the laws in place to protect the system those, everyone's generally ended up hanging in the square. Coffee? Not this morning. He had lost those four minutes somewhere, and he had to earn them back. Plus, water and the coffee itself came together to be an expenditure that was absolutely exorbitant. Shin did have the filter and grounds he'd been using for the past two weeks in his refrigerator. But no. The water still made it too expensive. The time made it impossible this morning. Where had those four minutes gone? Breakfast. Shin had one of the workforce bars that were sold for only one credit for a box of 16. Such a great deal. The bars are priced low, which already made them desirable, but they were also formulated by the People's Republic to be extremely nutritious, sans all the fluff and nonsense that the more exotic, more expensive items had. Taste and texture weren't needed to be anything special in Shin's estimation. Get the minimum calories for survival into the body, just enough to work, the perfect balance that had been derived by the scientists at the Health Department of the People's Republic. Perfect. When he was very young, Shin had a friend of a friend of a classmate of his that had had a dog. That kind of wealth was unbelievable. The sheer amount of credits someone had to earn to maintain a dog and all the resources necessary to keep that pet up to code with the daily living department was staggering. Every time he rushed out of his small allotment, though, Shin thought back to the tales his friend of a friend of a classmate would regale him and his friends with about the dog. Morning walks, feeding the animal breakfast, afternoon walks, baths, drinking water, feeding the animal dinner, health care to keep the beast up to code, 
It was all wildly expensive. The time. Great leader. The time that surely must have to be spent on and for the animal. But, in all those tales, the family got to come home to a little wagging tail and some affection even if that affection was probably all the more rushed amid the family's prescribed schedule. And again, if a family could afford a dog, if a family could afford to be and stay a family, their schedules and time allowances must have been extremely generous. The tales of the dog ownership came to him as he was on his way out, zipping out the door with only part of his morning routine done. He thought that he'd like a little head to pat and say farewell to on his way out the door. Yeah, that would be nice. There never was really any time to get lost in his thoughts, but at least they couldn't be in his thoughts. Well, yet anyway. If the party's mandatory nightly simulcasts were to be believed, they were making headway into that. The first of the cranial implants were in their sixth month and were testing well. So Shin would enjoy these flights of fancy, though brief, while he could. Down the stairs, quick, quick, quick. Got to get those four minutes back. He had planned on saving the five credits on the company bus ride, but wavered as he would take a bigger personnel file hit and credit deduction if he ended up being late. So, bus it was. His luck turned a bit for the better as he timed his arrival at the depot at precisely the moment his bus rolled up. The buses were rarely late. If anything, they were more often early, so this was good fortune indeed. He scanned his thumb, paid his four credits. He chose a discounted rate for voluntarily standing rather than sitting. And he made his way toward the back of the bus. Shin rifled around and checked his wrist monitor to let his division know he was on the company bus. Upon hitting send, he received an immediate notification giving him their expected ETA for him. It looked reasonable with the bus. He just couldn't dilly-dally, trip, or do much of anything before shooting into that building. Reasonable felt tighter the longer he rode the bus, though. The overall ride took 20 minutes a ton of time. But that was weighed into his day by the Daily Living Department and the Workforce Deployment Department. But, despite paying a fortune to relieve himself and flush the urine this morning, and despite foregoing coffee, he felt his bladder beginning to take a second go. He didn't know why. Shin had foregone coffee this morning. He hadn't paid for a potable glass of water last night, and he hadn't indulged in any pricey luxury beverages last night either. Hell, he couldn't remember the last time he had tea or soda or juice. Alcohol was getting far more affordable with the various departments arguing that alcoholic beverages after work helped the economy and made workers happier. But Shin didn't indulge in those either, chiefly because they had made his system a bit unpredictable. He couldn't afford more flushes throughout the day. Right, that would just have to wait. Shin had gotten to where he could survive the day with only one flush. He limited his flush to urine because that would cost him less time and therefore less credits. Displacing work time for personal time for bathroom breaks, food breaks, whatever breaks, was triple the rate of displacing other mandatory time slots. No matter how uncomfortable he got, Shin was not willing to bleed that much to pee. Moreover, his actual job itself required attention, so he didn't want to get behind. If there was a backlog, he would also take a deduction to his credits earned for the day. No way was he letting that happen. The bus arrived at the Bureau of Credit Accumulation and Accountancy, or BCAA, right on time. Not early. Damn the luck. 
Shin had worked at the BCAA for eight years this year. He'd originally come to the district to get that job because it did offer more credits. He'd been selected for upward mobility as part of a lottery system, and he didn't want to turn the opportunity down. What the recruiters into the middle working class didn't make clear, though, was that the living allotment that he had to pay for balanced out any extra credits he could have put away toward further advancement fees or luxury items or, hell, anything at all. Just living. There was some deep, poetic, dark irony to that somewhere. Paying to live, living to pay, working to live, living to work. Shin was relatively certain he'd stumbled across words like that amid his education, generally scrawled on walls or sung or chanted by traitors to the People's Republic. Maybe he shouldn't dwell on those deep, poetic, dark ironies. At any rate, what was done was done. He now spent the day double-checking machine numbers against self-reporting. Self-reporting against governmental accounting, governmental accounting against machine numbers. As part of all that, he was also responsible for making phone calls for live interviews with those he was reviewing. Though the people he messaged for simul calls were generally pleasant enough externally, Shin knew how much he terrified people. Their futures and livelihoods were in his hands. All of their dreams and savings. If he found something willfully malicious or selfish or against party standards, their actual lives themselves could be in his hands. For his part, Shin tried to be straightforward and plain with his assessments any time he was forced to talk to people personally. Still, even with the measured response from most, when confronted, many of his fellow citizens would get rather rankled, despite their clear attempts to stay cool. It amazed him how quickly some people went from affable, respectful, and calm to utterly pompous, fiery, and entitled. The opposite of how they presented themselves at first and an extremely dangerous combination of anti-party emotional responses. Those were the cases that Shin really dug into. Come at him? Threaten to report him for dereliction of duty and thereby hurt his personnel score and diminish his credits? No way. Those cases got more attention. Those citizens earned a fine-tooth comb that often resulted in their own prospects falling apart their own holdings being seized by the state. Shin cared. He really did. But he came first. He wasn't about to martyr himself for some selfish jackass. Those corrosive attitudes that came from those reactionaries were precisely what the party warned against day in and day out. Shin found himself through security and at his pod without having made his way there consciously. This shouldn't surprise him. He was here more than his allotment, and he made this journey six days a week, seven on the weeks they'd allow him to attack some of his work for a few extra credits. He had been in neutral amid his thoughts, but that was normal too. Neutrality, getting lost in his head, or the hyper-obsession with the passage of time. Those two modes were the only option for Shin. Those two modes were the only option for anyone wanting to do well and earn the credits to maintain the level of life to which they had become accustomed. Hell, the more hours logged, the better the chance for another lottery toward additional upward mobility. He had to keep that in mind too. Shin sat down at his desk started his portal, and began his work day. He dove in, blinked, made some portal calls, looked up when the soft tone that indicated midday rang out, chortled about the idiots flooding outside of the offices to take their proffered half-hour nutrition and movement break. Shin never took this. Shin never took his. Too much to do. Plus... 
he earned back five credits for not wasting that time. He could make progress and ingest at the same time. He dove back in, blinked, made some more portal calls. Sorry, no. It looks like your sock ek ranking is going down. Sorry, no. It looks like you owe back at least three hours from off-grid breaks. Sorry, no. It looks like we'll be needing to take at least an additional 200 credits because you failed to report your wife's missed period. Those pregnancy papers are going to cost you, sir. Another soft tone, this one deeper in pitch, alerted Shin to 1800. There again go those fools, shutting down and lurching toward the transports back to their homes. Why? What would they do in the three hours between now and the lights out for the day shift? He worked for another hour. This both earned him 20 extra credits and allowed him to take a much less jam-packed company bus home. He couldn't afford a wife. He couldn't afford a dog. There was no one to go home to. Nothing to go home to, save the slate of mandatory simulcast programming to put on while he ate his prepackaged dinners and got everything ready for another early start. In fact, most nights, he did some work on the side with his company-provided tablet. Why not? It was discouraged to passively take in simulcasts, but his supervisors still praised his dedication and super productivity. Shin even worked on his seventh days. Some took their two-hour-a-week recreation chits and did something, anything, on seventh days followed by an entire day of simulcasts and additional rest and nutrition, shoring themselves up for a week to come. But those blind men and women never, ever see progress. Most of them were born into the same class they die in. Not Shin. He'd moved up once, and he was bound and determined to catch the party's eye and earn his way another rung up the ladder through sheer determination and diligent hard work. The night shift began to trickle in at 1845. Shin began to power down his portal and got to a stopping point at all the accounts he'd been auditing there at the end of his shift. He wasn't tired, precisely, but he was certainly hollowed out. For a very brief moment, his mind flicked to some of the folk tales and whispered stories of people flitting around the countryside with excess food and flouncing about in water receptacles and... But no, 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 no. That was dangerous thought. That was corrosive to the order of things. Shin shook his head and headed back out to get through security, catch his bus, and head back to the allotment. Essentially, he lived his day in reverse when he walked out of his pod. Everything he had done that morning was done again. He followed his precise steps all the way back home. There was nothing out of the ordinary. There was nothing that stood out. This sameness caused Shin to wonder how anyone got inspired to compose the anthems of the People's Republic or witty enough to make the memory rhymes that helped children to tell the difference between the Bureau of Credit Accumulation and Accountancy and the Health Department and the Daily Living Department and all the rest. Creativity was something he had embraced as a child before the party had helped him realize how dangerous that was. He did miss it sometimes, though. Staring out at those lock-stepping people on those nondescript streets. Once back in his allotment, the night went by quickly. Albeit, he only had two hours or so before lights out for the day shift, so it wasn't like he had wasted or burned through time irresponsibly. Tonight, he would lie down at 2100. Not early, but not late. This way, 
he could try for an earlier wake-up than today. He'd watched enough simulcasts not to get dinged for avoiding doing so. And he could earn more credits through being early than through more hours of simulcast anyway. Shin paid a credit for an easing puff. The mist that sprayed out of the headboard down on his face was always worth it. His brain had a bad habit of continuing to sprint well after he'd lain down. The thoughts that came in the dark of night, those were the most dangerous thoughts of all. He pushed hopes and dreams and fulfillment and any of that abstract mess away as the mist began to take him toward unconsciousness. Shin woke up at 5.55. Yes! A second time and even earlier, he thought with sincerity. He'd beaten his workforce alarm for the sixth day in a row now. And today, he'd done so by five minutes. What a way to get the day going. He was now up to banking maybe about 12 extra credits thus far this week, even after yesterday's debacle about burning through his early minutes. Three minutes of required stretching in front of the simulcaster. Shin got almost all green lights with every stretch. Today saw a couple blinking yellows, letting him know he wasn't doing it quite right. Eh, a little less pride and a little less health today. <laughs> he snorted at the thought. Every morning he had to remind himself. Pride and health mean jack squat in a world running on credits. Now, to maximize on that five minutes to get back to work. Thank you for listening to Pay to Play, an original short story by me, Jared I. McGee. All sounds you've heard across this short story come from YouTube's free audio library, freesound.org, or are of my own creation. Those that come from the websites are being used under CC0 1.0 public domain dedication licenses. That does it this week for pros. As always, thank you so very much for joining me and I hope that you have enjoyed this short story. Keep your feeds refreshed throughout the week because All Hallows is coming and I am a Halloween fiend. So pros will be posting something in the form of a special. As you're gearing up for that spooky holiday, I certainly hope that you'll love those around you. Tell them that you do and embrace this life as it is, stranger than fiction. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.